Dear learners, now I am going to focus on blended learning and its pedagogical benefits as well as the flipped learning and its pedagogical benefits. The blended learning is also known as hybrid learning, it is a method of teaching that integrates technology and digital media with traditional instructor led classroom activities giving students more flexibility to customize their learning experiences. Blended learning is the combination of offline, it means face to face as well as the traditional learning and online learning in a way that the one complements the other. It provides individual with the opportunity to enjoy the best of both worlds. For example, a student might attend classes in the real world classroom settings and then supplement the lesson plan by completing online multimedia coursework. As such, the students would only have the physically attended class once a week and would be free to go at their own pace and without worrying about scheduling issues. Blended learning can increase access and flexibility for learners, increase level of activity learning and achieve better students experiences and outcomes. For teaching staff, blended learning can improve teaching and class management practices. A blend might include face to face and online learning activities and formats, traditional timetable classes with different modes such as weekend, intensive and external well established technologies such as lecture, capture and or with social media and emerging technology. The final one simulations, group activity, site based learning and practical. Now I am going to highlight the spectrum of blended learning strategies. The following four spectrums to be considered when blending training strategies will implementing. The first spectrum is schedule. Some training methods are synchronous meaning everybody participates together at a set time. Others are asynchronous and participants do not need to adhere to a set time. The second spectrum is leading. This aspect of training consider who is leading the learner through the material. Instructor led training is great for complex topic where it is useful to offer in depth explanations or expert opinion in immediate response to questions as they arise. Self phase training on the other hand is more of an individual pursuit and gives the learners control over when to move ahead in the material. The third spectrum is participations. Some training methods are aimed at learning in groups while others are geared towards individual participations. The fourth spectrum is technology. It is almost impossible these days to hold training without the use of any technology, but there is a still a range from less to more. A physical classroom with a whiteboard and paper handouts is on the low end of this spectrum, while on online classrooms with VOIP and electronic books and virtual labs is clearly at the other end of the spectrum. Now I am going to highlight the process of blended learning. Designing for blended learning requires a systematic approach starting with planning for integrating blended learning into our course followed by designing and developing the blended learning elements. The third one is implementing the blended learning designs. The fourth one is reviewing the effectiveness of our blended learning designs and finally the fifth one planning for the next delivery of course then involves improving the blended learning experience for both staff and students. Now I am going to highlight the types of blended learning. There are different types of blended learning models such as the first one is online. An instructor delivers lesson via on online platform using e-learning resources complemented by periodic face to face meets. The second one is rotations. Students switch between self phased learning and classroom learning. The third one is flexible. Most learning takes place through the online platform, but instructors provide additional support through small group settings. The fourth one is online learn. The learners comes together in a physical classroom and an online teachers delivers the lessons with the help of an on site professional. The next one is personalized blended model. This model straddles the physical and virtual spaces based on learners needs. The next one is self blended model. 
students take online classes to supplement their classroom learning. The last one is face to face learning. Lessons are delivered using online media by an on site instructor. Now, I am going to highlight the benefits of blended learning. The advantages of blended learning for students include increased learning skills, greater access to information, improved satisfactions and learning outcomes and opportunity both to learn with others and to teach others. Recent research identified the following key benefits of blended learning. The first one, opportunity for collaboration at the distance. Individual students work together virtually in an intellectually indigenous as a learning practice. The second one is increased flexibility. Technology enabled learning allows for learning anytime and anywhere, letting students learn without the barriers of time and locations but with the possible support in person engagement. The third one is increased interactions. Blended learning offers a platform to facilitate greater interactivity between students as well as between the students and teachers. The fourth one is enhanced learning. Additional types of learning activities improve engagement and can help students achieve higher, more meaningful levels of learning. The next one is learning to be a virtual citizen. Learners practice the ability to project themselves socially and academically in an online community of inquiry. Digital learning skills are becoming essential to be a lifelong learner and blended courses help learners master the skills for using variety of technology. Previously we are discussing about blended learning, now I move to the flipped classroom and its pedagogical importance. In the traditional classroom, the teacher delivers new learning to the students face to face. Students listen, interact, take notes and then consolidate new knowledge during homework or follow up tasks. The flipped classroom inverts traditional teaching methods, delivering instructions online outside of class and moving homework into the classroom. It is a 180 degree shift in the traditional education. Flipped learning is a pedagogical approach in which the traditional notion of classroom based learning is inverted so that students are introduced to the learning materials before a class. With classroom time then being used to deepen understanding through discussion with peers and problem solving activities facilitated by instructors. In the traditional classroom motto or mantra is teach at school, work at home. In the flipped classroom it may inverse compared to the traditional typing style, teach at home, work at school. In the flipped classroom model consists of two phases, the first phase is at home. Students watch lectures at home at their own pace, communicating with peers and teachers via online discussions. Learners gain control on the learning process through studying course material outside of class. Using reading pre-recorded video lectures, technology tools like Moodle and Edmodo. The second one is at classes. Concept engagement take place in the classroom with the help of the instructor. During the class time, the instructor facilitates learning process by helping learners work through course materials individually and in a group. Class time is freed up for student centered learning activities, inquiry based learning, project based learning, collaborative work, teacher assisted learning. This flipped classroom approach supports instructors playing the most important role of guiding the students to deeper thinking and higher level of applications. A flipped class keeps students learning at the center of teaching. Now I am going to highlight in what way the flipped classroom it will be uh, compared to the Bloom's revised taxonomy. In terms of Bloom's revised taxonomy in 2001, students are doing the lower level of cognitive work gaining knowledge and comprehension outside of the class and focusing on the higher forms of cognitive work like application, analysis, synthesis and or evaluation in class where they have the support of their peers and instructors. This model contracts from the traditional model in which the first exposure occurs via lectures in class with students assimilating knowledge through homework, thus the term flipped classroom. Now, the, I am going to highlight the history of flipped classroom as well as flipped teaching. Flipped teaching was started by two chemistry teachers 
Jonathan Bergman and Aram Sams at Woodland Park High Schools in Colorado, USA. In order to cover the studies that missed the class lectures, they recorded the lectures and posted them online. The students who otherwise would have missed the classes benefited from it. Moreover, Aram Sams found out there are software available which could record PowerPoint presentation along with sound. This is when Sams and Bergman saw some opportunity of recording the lecture missed by students. In the beginning, they did it to reduce the burden of their work. However, this not only reduced the work, but also helped students who missed the lectures. Also, many of the teachers and students benefited from the videos. The students all over the world started watching the videos and asking questions to them. This is when they started going to different portals and places on explaining about flipped classroom. This led to the popularity of inverted classroom. I am going to highlight the elements of the flipped classroom. The flip following are the elements of the flipped classrooms. The first one is pre-class activities. It provides an opportunity for students to gain first exposure prior to class. The mechanism used for first exposure can vary from simple textbook reading to lecture videos to broadcast or screencasts. These videos can be created by the instructor or found online from YouTube, the Khan Academy, MIT Open Courseware, Coursera and other similar sources. The second one is provide incentives. Providing incentives for students to prepare for class. The assignment task can vary ranged from online quizzes to worksheet to short writing assignments. But in each case, the task provided an incentive for students to come to class prepared by speaking the common language. The third one is assessment mechanism. Provide a mechanism to access the students understanding. The pre-class assignments that students complete as evidence of the preparation can also help both the instructor and the student assess understanding. Pre-class online quizzes can allow the instructor to practice just in time teaching, which basically means that the instructor tailors class activities to focus on the element with which students are struggling. If automatically graded, the quizzes can also help students pinpoint areas where they need help. The fourth one is high level cognition. Provide in class activities that focus on higher level cognitive activities. If the students gain basic knowledge outside of class, then they need to spend class time to promote deeper learning. Students may spend time in class engaged in debates, data analysis or synthesis activities. The key is that students are using class time to deepen their understanding and increase their skills at using their new knowledge. Now, I am going to highlight the four pillars of flipped classroom. Flipped classroom approach have four different pillars. The properties of the pillars which is English correspondence is flip or explain like this by referring the first letters. The first one is F, it means flexible environment. It indicates provision of time and place flexibility of learning. Flipped learning allows for a variety of learning modes. Educators often physically rearrange the learning spaces to accommodate a lesson or unit to support either group work or independent study. They create flexible spaces in which students choose when and where they learn. The second letter L refer learning culture. In traditional teacher centered approach, the source of knowledge is teacher. In flipped classroom approach, there is a transition from teacher centered approach to student centered approach, wherein class time is dedicated to exploring topics in greater depth and creating rich learning opportunity. As a result, students are actively involved in knowledge construction as they participated in and evaluate the learning in a manner that is personally meaningful. The third letter is I that intentional content it means. Educator use intentional content to maximize classroom time in order to adopt methods of student center. Active learning strategy depending on grade level and subject matter. The fourth letter is P. It refers professional educator. Educator are reflective in their practice, connect with each other to improve their instruction, accept constructive criticism and tolerate control coerce in their classrooms, while professional educators take a less 
visibly prominent roles in a flipped classroom, they remain the essential ingredient that enables flipped learning to occur. Next, I am going to highlight some of the flipped classroom models. First model I am going to talk about here, standard inverted classroom. Learners are assigned the homework of watching video, hearing the audio lectures and reading any material relevant to the next day's class content. During class time, students practice what they have learned through the convention schoolwork with their instructor freed up for additional one on one time. The second mode is discussion oriented flipped mod classroom model. Instructor or teachers assign lecture videos as well as any other video or reading related to the day's subjects via teachers tube video or TED talks, YouTube videos and other resources. Class time is devoted to discussion, debating and explorations of the subjects. This can be especially useful approach in subjects like history, arts uh, as well as the English. The third model is demonstration focused flipped classroom model. Especially for the subjects like chemistry, physics and mathematics that require learners to remember and repeat activities. It is most helpful to have a video demonstration to be able to rewind and rewatch. In this model, the teacher use screen recording software like Screencast of Matrix, Camtosia, Cam Studio and EZWED and Tinitech to demonstrate the activity in a way that allows students to follow along with their own pace. The next model is Fox Flix Classroom. This flipped classroom model instead has those students watch lectures video in class, giving them the opportunity to review material at their own pace, with the teachers able to move from students to student to offer whatever individual support each young learner needs. The fifth one is group based flipped classroom. This model provides a new element to help students to learn from each other. The class starts with lectures video and other resources shared before class. The shift happens when students come to class, teaming up to work together on the day's work. Assignments like a collaborative learning model. This format encourages students to learn from one another and helps students to not only learn the to the right answers or but also how to actually explain to a peer why those answers are right. The next model is virtual flipped classroom model. Some college and university professors now share lectures video for students viewing, assign and collect work via online learning management system like Moodle, Google Classroom and Edmodo and simply require students to attend office hours or other regularly scheduled time for brief one on one instructions based on that individual students needs. Here all the transaction through online therefore, it is come under the umbrella of virtual flipped classroom model. The next model is flipping the teacher. All the videos created for the flipped classroom does not have to begin and end with the teacher. Students too can make use of video to better demonstrate profici proficiency. Assign students to, to their record practice, role play activities to show competency or ask each of to film themselves presenting a new subjects or skill as a means to teach the teacher. Now I am going to highlight the tools of the flipped classroom. These tools may be useful for developing a flipped classroom. Technology is a primary tool of the flipped classroom. Students need to access to technology to be able to watch videos at home. Equally important is educator access to and comfort with the technology necessary to film, edit and upload the videos. There are a variety of different video recording devices that teachers may use. For educators who already use a PowerPoint or smart boards in their classroom, the use of screen casting software that records screen movement and allow for narrations to the to be recorded may be the most convenient way to create lecture videos. Without the technological integration, we could not implement the flipped classroom. Technology is one of the key components of the flipped approaches. The following are some of the technological tools are used for the implementations of the flipped classroom strategy. The first tool I am going to talk about here video creation tools. There are several video creation tools are available online, 
uh, for free while some of them should be purchased. Most of these video creating tools are device specific. Some of the popular tools are Screencast-O-Matic, Camtasia PC, TechSmith Relay, Avis Mix and Adobe Presenter. The next tool I am going to focus here video hosting tools. After forming the video, it should be placed online for access for students. There are several sites to store video online. YouTube is considered to be a most popular one to host videos. It is widely used around the world by teachers, students and other professionals. Some of the video sites are YouTube Vinos, TeacherTip, ScreenCost.com, Acclaim, then Google Drive. The third tool I am going to discuss here, video interaction tools. Some of the tools that provide teachers to access some information such as which students watched, which lectures video, how long he watched, how he answered the questions in the video. Some of the popula population video interaction tools are listed below. Educanon, Edbuzzle, Japsions, Obvious Mix and Verso, as well as the TechSmith Relay, Adopter Presenter, then Google Apps for Education. The next tool I am going to talk about the learning management tools. As created video can be sent to video hosting sites. They can be presented to access by using learning management system. LMS are not only broadcast videos, also provide interaction with students. Some of the most population tools are given below. Moodle, Sakai, Blackboard, Verso app, Schoolology, Canvas, my big campus, Haiku Learning, then finally Google Classroom. Now I am going to highlight some of the potential benefits of flipped classroom and its strategies. The value of flipped classroom is in the repurposing of class time into workshop where the students can inquiry about lecture content, test their skills in applying knowledge and interact with one another in hands on activities. During class sessions, instruction functions as coaches or advisors encouraging students in individual inquiry and collaborative effort. The wide range of potential benefits of using a flipped classroom includes, but it not limited to the fact that it can. The first benefit is deep learning. As a result of learner taking accountability and responsibility, interacting or debating meaningfully and often with their instructor and peers and getting and giving instant feedback that acquire a deeper understanding of the content and how to use it. The second one is active participation. In the flipped classroom, the learner's role shifts from passive recipient to active constructor of knowledge, giving them opportunity to practice using the interaction tools of the discipline. The third one is increasing interactions. Flipped classroom provides an opportunity to the learners work together applying course concept with guide guidance from the instructor. This increased interact interactions help to create a learning community that encourages them to build knowledge together inside and outside the classroom. The fourth one is instant feedback. With more opportunity for students to apply their knowledge and their demonstrate their ability to use it, gaps in their understanding become visible to both themselves and the instructor. Instructor have more time to help student and explain difficult concepts. The next one is own space learning. It can be used to revisit the important concept and content, checking understanding and clearing up misconceptions. It teach students to take responsibility for own learning. The next one is active engagement. It increases students to student engagement. Class time fed up of lectures allow for increased faculty to students and student to student interaction. There is also more time for extended classroom discussion and exercise. This allows students to engage with the concept, learning material and peers in the classroom. Thus, increased students support is an implicit result of the flipped classroom. The next one is efficient use of class time. Lecture content in the form of videos of manageable length can be provided outside of the classroom. Shorter videos have the benefits of distilling a given topic and the topic can be broken up into subtopics. As this happens, traditional passive learning takes place outside of the classroom and class time can be freed up to increase meaningful engagement with the students. Faculty members have more time to interact with students' clarity learning points and additional learning objectives can be incorporated as can active learning. Now I am going to highlight the challenges of flipped classroom.
challenges that can arise when using flipped classroom include increased workload for the instructor, time, expertise and effort are needed to create source videos. Time and effort is required to rethink and prepare both pre-class and in-class activities. However, activities can often be reused without too much effort the next time the class is offered. It requires careful preparations and the right mix of out of class and in class elements. The second one is lack of technology and internet. Technology and the internet are the major components of flipped classes. There are so many places and schools which do not have access to the computers and the internet. If they are not available for students, the whole idea of flipping the classroom will be ineffective. Equipments and access for students to view video lectures may be an issue. The next one is not for all subject and content. It is not appropriate for some types of content as well as some subjects. The next one is students not being prepared. Students may not be prepared because students may not immediately understand the values of this model. Hopefully, the instructor have taken the requisite steps to ensure that students are prepared for class. But if students do come to class unprepared, do not re lectures, move forward anyway. Once students see that you are serious about supporting activity learning in the classroom, they will likely to be better prepared the next time. The next one is not all active learning strategy for feasible in large classes. The activity that can be feasibly facilitated in a really large class are fewer than those in the small classes, but there are still many ways to engage students in applying concept and peer learning. A mixture of many lectures and think, pair, share and or the use of clickers can be effective even in really large classes. The next challenge is classroom space. There may be problems with the availability of class spaces that supports active and collaborative work. The next challenge is instructor might need to decrease the course content. With more student participation and dialogue, instructor may find that they are not able to be cover as much material as they have in that post. So, rethinking the learning outcomes of the course may necessary. The concepts that are learned are likely to be retained for a longer and applied more effective with the active learning components. The next challenge is online distractions. Students require internet to watch videos online. Because students spend time online, this may lead to rego regarding social media, YouTube videos and computer games as well as the online. Now, I am going to give some of the tips to implement flipped classroom effectively. Communicate the rationale behind the flipped classroom to the learners. The second one is provide incentives for learners to prepare for class. Then third one is provide a clear connection between in class and out of class activities. The fourth one is ensure that classroom activities are clearly defined and well structured in suit to the purpose. The fifth one, allow sufficient time for learners to carry out their assignments. The sixth one, provide facilitating facilitation and guidance that supports a learning community. The seventh tips is provide prompt and adaptive feedback on group and project work. The next tips is utilize the technology that are familiar and easy to access. Now, the, I am going to give some of the roles of teachers in the flipped classroom approach. The most important factor in flipped classroom approach is the role of teacher. The role of flipped classroom educators are presented below. Creating learning condition based on questioning, instead of transferring knowledge directly being a guide to make learning easy, making one to one interaction with students, correcting misunderstanding, then individualizing learning for each students as well as the using technological equipment suitable for learning condition, creating interactive discussion conditions, increasing participation of students, then sharing lecture videos as out of class activities. Then finally, providing feedback by using pedagogical strategy. Now, I am going to highlight the role of students in the flipped classroom approach. In flipped classroom approach, student transform from passive receiver of knowledge to active promoter of knowledge. In this approach, the roles of students are expressed below. The first role is taking their own learning responsibility. The second one is 
watching lecture video as before the course and preparing for the course by using learning materials. The third one is learning at his own learning speed. The fourth one is making necessary interaction with his teachers and friends taking and giving feedback. The fifth tips is participation discussion within the class the finally participating team work. Okay. Now, I am going to summarize my presentation. The flipped classroom is a blended learning model in which traditional ideas about classroom activities and homework are reversed or flipped. In this model, instructor have students interact with new material for homework first. Then they use class times to discuss the new information and put those ideas into practice. The flipped classroom can address the needs of struggling students by allowing teachers to personalize the students' education. Flipped learning transfers the ownership of the learning to the students. Flipped learning personalized learning for all students. Flipped learning gives teachers time to explore deeper learning opportunity and pedagogies with the students. As well as the flipped learning makes learning the center of the classroom. Then flipped learning maximize the face to face time in the classroom. I hope you may get some of the conceptual understanding about the blended learning as well as the flipped classroom and its pedagogical strategies. Hope soon I will meet you in the next session. Thank you learners. Bye.